Hello, I'm Paul Quayle, the Director of APAC Assistance. I'm doing a quick overview of the issues in East Asia Pacific that may affect the security paradigm this Tuesday, the 29th of January. Firstly, just to the north of us here in Singapore, in Malaysia. Malaysia has been barred from hosting the 2019 World Para Swimming Championships after they banned Israeli athletes from the event. The Israeli Foreign Ministry condemned the decision and accused Malaysia of anti-Semitism. The 2019 championships, which is scheduled for 29 July until the 4th of August, act as a qualifier for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. The International Paralympic Committee said it had been given assurances by the Paralympic Council of Malaysia in 2017 that all eligible athletes would be allowed to compete safely in Kuching. Apparently the assurance wasn't worth much. Malaysia, which is a majority Muslim country, banned the athletes because of Israel's alleged poor treatment of Palestinians. Also in Malaysia, yesterday, former Prime Minister Najib Razak was charged in the High Court on three additional charges of money laundering. Najib already faces three charges of criminal breach of trust involving funds amounting to US 10.2 million of SE, SRC International Funds, SRC being a subsidiary of the one Malaysia development Burhad company. The three additional charges of money, money laundering are for being involved in money laundering of a total sum of a further USD 11.4 million through three private banking accounts allegedly held by Najib. And of course, Najib, pleaded not guilty of all the charges in the High Court. In China yesterday, the US Justice Department announced two indictments against Chinese company Huawei and its subsidiaries and against the company's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou. US prosecutors are seeking to extradite Meng from Canada. The prosecutors have charged Huawei of doing business in Iran through a Hong Kong company called Skycom which is in violation of US sanctions and alleged that Meng deceived US banks into believing the two companies were separate. The company was also charged in a separate case of stealing trade secrets from T-Mobile. Also in China, just to further heighten the tensions with the USA on top of the ongoing Huawei issue and the trade issue and the South China Sea issue, China has sparked more controversy to further risk Asia's stable decades by testing a next generation missile dubbed by Western media in their usually overly sensationalized manner as the Guam killer. The Dongfeng 26 missile has improved stability and accuracy launched during military exercises this week. The intermediate range ballistic missile has an estimated range of at least three to five and a half thousand kilometers. The new missile has been revealed reportedly to send a message to the United States about China's military strength. The missile could be used in nuclear conventional and anti-ship strikes, implying China could use it to attack US aircraft carriers and naval bases in the Asia Pacific region obviously within the restrictions of anti-missile technologies held by the United States. Military tensions between the US and China has been escalating in I beg your pardon, after the US sent two warships through the Taiwan Strait last week. This latest move from a Chinese perspective may also be a message to the USA to heed that they are no longer the only superpower and thus can't dictate their every whim. Thailand. Yesterday, the website for early voting registration crashed after a huge number of voters rushed to secure their voting rights. The high traffic on the registration website suggests the upcoming election may see a high turnout. The March 24 general elections will be Thailand's first election in seven years. The online registration opened up after midnight on the website of the Department of Public Administration. The website crashed in the morning after too many voters tried to access the site simultaneously. The issue was resolved yesterday itself. You can check us out at www.apacassistance.com where you can review our membership products or buy our materials on a pay-for-view basis if you are not already a risk member for East Asia Pacific or South Asia. Thank you.